Yeah, my name is Rubadas. I'm from IBM. I'm a mobile architect from the Mobile Center of Competence, a special department inside IBM where we do a lot of mobile solutions. Um, I'm telling you this because a lot of people came out and said, you are the Bluemix expert. I'm not the Bluemix expert. <laughs> I'm the mobile expert. But I wanna, uh, one of the reasons I'm here today is to, to tell you that this Bluemix is really that straightforward and easy to understand in graphs that a jerk like me can actually understand Bluemix. So if I can do it, you can definitely do it. Another thing is I'm actually a bit sick. So um, I don't hope that uh, anything happens during this, uh, this, this, this session, but, but actually what, what will happen is that I'm going to get some help from you guys. So, uh, so hopefully be, uh, be very proactive. This is like a discussion, hopefully, and, and maybe I will even point at somebody who needs to come up here and help me a little. So I'm very weak today. And again, I want to say thanks for everybody for coming. It's really nice to see. I see some DTUers. I'm from DTU. So thanks, guys, for being here. <laughs> and I see somebody from the Danish Royal Police. Uh, I don't hope that this hack we're going to do today, that you're going to get me arrested or anything. But, but, uh, but let's, let's, let's try to get, get into it. It's really about Bluemix, IoT and some funny, funny things we can make with it. W why, even, why even bother, right? W why, do we, why do we need Bluemix or this cloud or these Internet of Things? Why do we need these kind of pass platform as a service or infrastructure as a service? It's big. My, my, my hypothesis is that we have really gotten to a po uh, position now today where it's about your brains, your innovation. You don't need to think about technology, infrastructure, licenses, or something like that. You just need to be productive. I think I can speak for a lot of people here if you've been troubling with some Ubuntu package or some libraries which are not com compiled correctly or something like that. We don't want to waste our time on that. We want to do productive things. So as, as this founder said, he said, okay, guys, Actually, now with, with, with the capabilities out there, Bluemix is one example, you can actually, in a Starbucks, have the same kind of data center and data power as some of the biggest companies in the world. That can even be taken further. We also believe that our biggest enterprise clients, your companies, even if it's a startup, you can actually take it around and, 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 and try to narrow down your employees, even the people who are not programming or doing IT a lot, and bring them in play. Do a lot of hackathons and so on. But what they need are some tools which they can use to, to take their ideas. And that's because there's a lot of tacit knowledge out there, a lot of ideas, a lot of profits which are not exploited. There's a lot of potential which are really hindered because the client, uh, the, the, the company has a lot of IT governance. To order a server takes two months. To get the software installed takes uh, you know, another two months. All these kinds of blockers and challenges makes it very difficult for that employee, that knowledge he has, to actually transform that to profit. And that's what we believe that's my hypothesis with Bluemix, we can actually disrupt in a way which were never possible before. And I'm going to take you through that journey today. I'm going to give you an example where I'm not a big IoT expert, but I have an idea. I have some devices. I want to really fast transform my idea into something like a prototype or something actually giving value to somebody. We're going to, there's a lot, we, be, we believe Bluemix can use, be used to a lot of topics. I, I hope people on the backside can read this, but, but one of the things we are going to target today is Internet of Things. So that's, that's the area I want to take part of. Bluemix is a lot of things. It's not only IoT, but what, what, what I'm going to do today is, is going to be diving down into Internet of Things. And I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi, which is really cheap. It's like $20. I'm going to use a Wi-Fi connection and then basically a trial account on Bluemix. So it's actually going to be very cheap for me. Before we go further, does everybody here know what Bluemix is? Can I get a hand of people who have, who have tried it out? Okay, a lot of people don't know. Okay, so it's, it's actually, and uh, I think even IBM has difficulties to define it because it's been evolved a lot. In the beginning, it was supposed to be a place where you could go in and then you could say, oh, I want a MySQL database. Oh, I want a, an ASP.NET runtime environment. Um, 
we at the, the latest we've done now is we've even said, oh, you can even order a virtual machine which is empty and you can put in whatever you want. But it's, 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 it's the end-to-end. -end. So you can go and order a virtual machine or a Docker where you can put in whatever you want. Or the, the nice thing I think about it, go in and say, oh, I want these kind of databases, these kind of runtimes. And by the way, if you have APIs which are pretty awesome, like the Watson API, so let's say I want to ask a question about healthcare or travel, I want to find out a distance between two points. So a, a lot of very intelligent APIs where, where I don't need to do that, you can kind of think of a library or something like that which helps you. So, so actually be able to, to, beside these databases and runtime environments, I can also have these powerful APIs which can help me solve my problem. That is what, what Bluemix is. Um, I think the best way of describing Bloomis is actually trying it out. So I'm going to, uh, at the end of this presentation, go into Bluemix, establish kind of a, a runtime environment, and go go through a, this application I'm going to do for you. Um, they they give a lot of details. You can build your own apps. Scalability. The infrastructure below is very very very, you know powerful and so on, the security, all this enterprise stuff, right? But I think if you want to hit the nail, <laughs> power to the people. Actually, that means, like, what I mean by people is the developers. It's giving the developers the power to do what they want to do, not be blocked by some IT manager saying, oh, we have these kinds of policies and, and, and delays and so on. You know what? Go and play around because you're not going to break anything. It's going to be your playground and you can decide what you want to do. Take your idea, make some pro product, something productive and show me it works. And I, th I will believe the CEO of your company will say, okay, wow, we will, go, we will take this prototype and put it into production. Um, to the business, we can also say, by the way, there are these advantages. We are not going, we, if you have already some existing IT, like big, big data centers, by the way, you don't need to throw them out. We can reuse it in Bluemix. Uh, at, at the same time, one of the other things the manager are very, really keen about is saying that, oh, we can do very fast to market. Those kinds of buzzwords are also <laughs> some, of the, some of the advantages of Bluemix and can be used to, to position Bluemix as the, as the tool. Now I think I want to actually go forward. I'm not a, a PowerPoint slide guy. I actually like to code uh, a lot. So, so I will try to, to put, take you with me how I code or how I want to code this Internet of, of, of Things application. And maybe we can, uh, we can see how, 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 how easy it is to use Bluemix. But I need you guys to be a little uh, positive around it because, uh, yeah, again, I've been sick and there's, there's been some, some, some deadlines and so on, as everybody has. But the whole purpose is I want to, I want to show how, how fast and easy we can make something uh, on this Raspberry. But if I, can, if I can kind of get your minds to work, so let's see. I, I hope that you guys like candy. I do. Uh, so what I really like is, let's say I have this candy machine or candy box at my office or in my home. I like it to be full, but it never turns to be full. After a very short time, it, it gets empty. But So I get really sad when I get that kind of thing. So couldn't it be nice for me to you know, uh, know when that this box is going to be kind of empty in a, in, a, in a soon way? Let's say if it's half empty, get me a notification. Because I never think about it when I'm out going from my work to home or so on because you're always so busy. But if you actually get a notification or something like that, maybe you will actually go by the, the store on the way home and you'll be happy because the, the, the candy box is full. So that's kind of the use case. If, could, could, did people understand the use case that I want to have my candy box full and still be happy? Um, over here, we kind of have the architecture around it. So, so I have a Raspberry Pi. I want to use that. Um, I have something called IBM Bluemix. In that IBM Bluemix, we have this runtime environment called Node.js and Node.red. So Node.red is actually the keyword in this, in this topic today. I want to do my prototyping with Node.red. I want to show you guys how easy it is to make a flow um, and with that flow actually be able to get notified when my candy is getting, getting, getting em candy box is getting empty. And through Bluemix, I want to push that kind of notification out to some maybe, you know, I don't know, browsers or uh, mobile phones, but actually Twitter. That's what I, I want to know everybody. I want to, to get everybody to know that I'm, I'm getting run, running out of candy. They can help me or I will, I will need some candy very soon. 
so that was the, the the use case and the architecture. Now I think you know when you get your hands dirty, I started with thinking Flumix, but then really fast it became Raspberry with a breadboard with a lot of you know wires and stuff. It became really funny. Um, you realize that these weight or pressure sensors are actually not that uh, long. So so why not actually also try to involve a 3D printer? So for fi 500 bucks, my company bought a 3D printer. <laughs> so you can basically go in and print something. So what I did was really an open source tool, make some boxes. This is not necessary, but this was like the top of the top cream and, and, and made a box where it's like kind of a weight. So you can actually put that under that candy machine, basically. Um, I can then say that you know during that uh, 3D print, uh, it, it um, the 3D printer didn't work that well, so I couldn't make that uh, little weight at the end, anyways. But every time we we got almost close, it um, the, the the strings got uh, attached in there. So this is just like some learnful lessons around you know it is easy to go out there and and buy a 3D printer, but there can be some 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 uh, some you know you're not always lucky at the time. So we had to deliver this machine back. But that was just a sidekick. Um, and that's, by the way, the 3D printer, if you can uh, see it. And it's in there. OK, then maybe I should actually try to load up the Bluemix and see how it works. Um, I, I'm going to log in to the Bluemix account. I, I'm hearing that there's a competition going on today. So, so a lot of people will hopefully get a free trial account. And it will actually look like this when you log in. You will have a dashboard. <laughs> This will be the, my resolution is not the best, but this is basically the dashboard. It will tell you, oh, you have some, some applications running. What I want to do, I want to do a completely new application. So I'll go in and say, oh, I want a new. It's going to be a web application because it's a note. I want to take, a, this is another thing. Beside predefined runtimes, you, IBM also has has said, oh, you can actually browse for some boilerplates, which are pre-compiled pre or pre-packed pre technologies where, where you know, there might be a database, there might be some security, and there might be a runtime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Internet of Things Foundation starter. It contains the Node.js environment in this case and a database. I'm not going to use the database today anyway, but I want to show you how 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 you can do it without any any further delay we need a name for an app i don't know if you can you give me a name for an app we want to use some prefix candy machine Can, candy crush okay let's see if it's uh it's taken or uh, so now i told bluemix I want this uh, Node.js runtime environment. And by the way, also populate it with the Node-RED um, runtime environment and give me a Node-RED UI, which is an IBM open source product where you can, that's the UI part of it, so you can do the flows and the Node-RED flows. I'll tell you what the Node-RED flow is, but, but there's going to be three things it's going to populate my, um, my, my uh, application with. So it was actually pretty neat. The Candy Crush is available. So it's going to not only make my space, it's also actually going to push it up on the web and stage it. Let's say it's going to take a minute or something. Um, By the way, if there's any questions, you can kind of ask them while we're waiting. Oh, OK. <laughs> One minute is maybe. So here you can see the status and the activity lock. Another thing which is pretty neat about um, Bluemix is, is the whole way of it's out of the box supporting DevOps. So if you have a, a place where you can put your application and it can get into the web, you can also attach that to the, a source code repository. So JIT is the way in, in Bluemix you can do that. So this pre-populated application, I can say, oh, by the way, give me a, 
a JIT, put up, put up a JIT repository as well. So I can afterwards download the code and, and, and modify it and push it up. And when you push it up, automatically it gets deployed and, and stashed again. So I'm also at the same time doing some multi some parallel activities like adding this JIT repository. And it will say, hopefully yes, press continue. So yeah, it asked me actually, do you want to populate the repository with that style application and also enable this delivery pipeline? So this delivery pipeline is, is the thing if you kind of push any new code, it has a hook or it, it listens to the source code and then it can say, wow, you made a commit and a push, so I want to actually build this and deploy it. So I'll say yes to that and just in case. If you go into the JIP repository, you can actually afterwards modify it so you can put in build processes. So you can, if you want to fire off some test cases or you want to say, I want to actually put it on two servers and so on, you can design that flow as well. But that's going to be for another session. <laughs> right now it says that my application has been um, made and started and staged. Let's see if it's actually working. Yeah, so this is the Node-RED UI pre-populated application, which now is online. It's on the net. You can, you can kind of actually access this, which is not completely cool because you need to make some security around it. But, but for the moment, it comes out of the box without uh, any authentication. Here down here, it says, learn how to post password protected. Um, so this was basically my, my, my Candy Crush Node.js application, Node.red application. So if we go back to the architecture, um, now I have this kind of established, but it's really kind of a little empty. I, I need to do some flows, right? Because I have my Raspberry, which is going to, you know, detect this candy weight of some kind. It needs to inject that data somewhere here, but how that data is needed to be injected and what we don't do with that data, I haven't, I haven't really done that flow at all. So that's why I need to make these flows. And that's why you use this Node-RED UI. So if I go back to my Node-RED UI, I can go to that editor. <clears throat> we want to do a new sheet. Oh, yeah. It comes with a pre-populated flow, which is not the one we are going to use because it's slightly different. That's the temperature or something. We want to do something with pressure. Can, can I, now I need some help again. I'm a bit sick again. What, do you know what, what, what we want to do right now? What, 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 what might we want to do in this flow? I can tell you some of the inputs we have. So in here, you have all, already some pre-populated pre, pre components. So it says input. So that must be something which can go into our flows. There are some, some options. We have some outputs, so we can, from our node red, we can actually push out of the Bluemix as well. There are some functions, so the data we kind of get into the flow or whatever we do in the flow, we can kind of manipulate with it, do some, do some basic commands, do some formatting. Then there's social, oh wait, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to give my friends a notification of my candy box being, being, uh, being empty. Emails. I think this is pretty old school. I don't know. Do anybody use IRC here? Okay. So you guys, I can, I can push it to you when, when I'm done. Then there's storage. So that's another neat thing. In my architecture, you didn't see any database except that flow storage database. But if I actually wanted to store them, store the data, and I kind of wanted over a year to see my candy kind of intake and do analysis, maybe it's good to use some database to store it in and, and, and do some big data analysis on it on top. Analysis sentiment, it's ma mainly used for if you have a lot of, let's say, some, some text of any kind and you want to do some kind of, oh, there's something called IBM Watson as well. So in my case, in this use case, we're probably not going to use it, but it's pretty neat that you, from this Node-RED UI, can invoke Watson services. This is maybe not too clear, um, but let me zoom in a little. So it can do language identification. So if I get some data in, I can ask the Watson, hey, what kind of data, what kind of language is this, by the way? Can you translate it? Can you, give, can you tell me if this is a positive or negative text? Can you, by the way, 
if I talk, if you give it some kind of a, a text, audio text, can you make it into tr transcribe it? Um, so, so in here, they all they are already some um, some Watson uh, <coughs> services as well, which is going to be extended over time. These are just the ones we we, we do at the moment, but. For every month, there's like a new component ad added. Um, hopefully, they will they will continue with that visual recognition. But but can anybody help me here? If I kind of point at some some random person, maybe that's maybe too evil. But but what do I want to do if I have this data on my Raspberry? I want to put into my flow. So that's a good question. Look, I'm not an awesome guy, so my 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 Raspberry is a is a manual push, so it pushes every two seconds. So if it's a push, you have to listen. So we will we will make some kind of a web service, right, where where they can push the data in there. So in this case, I'm just again being very simple. Uh, I know this from my mobile. REST services is something I use in the mobile uh, solutions a lot. So let me let me do that. That's something I know at least. And just to be, you know, very easy again, let's do a get method. So basically, I don't want to have a big body in there. It's just going to be in the query. So let me see here. It's a REST service, and uh, it's a pressure, right? A weight or what I want to say. It. So it's this is a pressure service. I'm going to I'm going to have that here. So so basically I want my Raspberry Pi to to push data to that that instance a component. From there what do I want to do? Because this is pressure but I need to have the logic around that, you know, uh it's only when it's half empty, right? Yeah? So that's something I want I want Sorry? Function, yeah, it was a good call. So I want to take whatever I get from here, put into the function. So this is going to be, so there are some um, pre predefined uh, conventions around IoT. So it always says that it comes with, with some kind of a payload. So I want to... If, if if this risk service is giving me the pressure, I'm going to have some variable. Maybe I should only return that payload. The pr only you said isolate the value, right? You meant only take the value out of it. So that's going to be payload message payload dot pressure. Let's see if that's going to work. And this is my function. Oh, sorry, pressure, value. Good. And then what do I want to do afterwards? Okay. And uh, how can I do that? Switch, I heard a switch. That's a good call. I'm, I'm trying to have this, what do you call it? Uh, adapt to your hearing. <laughs> So, so a switch. Why do I need a switch? Because I need to compare the values, right? So, so let's say this is like the pressure de pressure decision. It's the payload. So, it has some initial value. I can I can kind of uh, you know uh, help here. I, I, it 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 will it will it will normally have if you don't pressure anything. If there's no weight on it, it will have a zero. So. It has to, if it's zero, it has to go to some, some, but actually we can say zero between zero and, it goes from zero to thousand. So that's the maximum level. So that's, so yeah, we can say hundred. Uh, we can also be nasty because I, I, I really want to get alert very fast. So when if it's already at 600, I would like to know. Um, so that's that's one, and then if it's between six hundred and one and thousand, that's one another. So I by doing this switch, I actually get two outputs over here. So that means that I can actually kind of say, oh, I want to do two different things based on these things. 
And and what what did I actually wanted to do with this? Do you remember? Twitter. Let's do Twitter. Twitter out. IRC now, nah, man. I I'm too old, too young for that. No, just kidding. It's just yeah, just kidding. Should we do political correct here? So that's. Oh, I only want to tweet when it's too low, right? So maybe. Just to be like a good programmer, I want to put up a debug something when it's good. Then I want to Twitter when it's not good. And I want to dump the measured property, debug. And let me see here. Zero to 600, so I actually need to change these two. Good. So that's just going to be locking to my internal lock to see that that's going to happen. Then I would like to tweet whenever my, my pressure is below zero and 600. So here it says, oh, you can add a new t Twitter credential. Let me do that. Just authorize app. You do it from the, oh, it says I, maybe it's, it's already logged in with my Twitter account, let's say. It was. So I made a Twitter account called Rubabot. Um, I don't know why we have this, but... Uh-oh. Uh I already had something for an hour ago. That was... Anyways, so... Um, let's go down here. Rubabot. at OK. So... This is basically how it's going to do, right? We have this end, uh, HTML kind of listener. Whenever some data comes in, it gets processed. I'm only going to I'm going to strip down all the things because there can be a lot of values, but I only want the pressure kind of amount. And then I would like to make a decision if it's between zero and six hundred or above six hundred, then I'm good. And if it's between zero and six hundred, I want to tweet and um, on Twitter. So, but I don't want to spam my Twitter people if it's actually between, you know, if it's, if it's zero. So I, I think I will make a third decision. So this would go from 10 to 600. And then I would like to have one, which is like. Mm -hmm. But I'm only. Yeah, exactly. But I'm going to if it's below if it's below that pressure, I'm going to tweet people. But Twitter has an inbuilt uh, API, so if it's the same value coming in, it's not going to um, uh, tweet it. Okay. So this is the flow. There's a one little trick here because it's Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Good call. Let me just check again. Are we happy now? So between 10 and 600, I'm going to tweet Zero and nine, completely sad. I'm not going to tweet it. Between zero, 601, good pressure. Okay. So this should be good. What I would like to do is that we need to send, otherwise it's going to, it's going to be a synchronous call. So it's just going to wait. So I need to make a response back to whatever client who, who invoked this. I think this should be good. Let's, yeah. So this is, this is going to listen on a port. This is going to be a wrist, right? And it's going to, whenever something hits it, it's going to process it. Yes. So it's my, it's my Raspberry Pi, which will have the polling um, frequency. Okay. I, well, you asked me that? 
<laughs> it's because it's a uh, it's um, post requests are good when you have a body a body which is pretty. You have a lot of things, and a get request is you know completely fine if you just want to have a rest query and with one value or something like that and there's no security involved here so that's why but i'm actually the whole this http is going to be challenged afterwards um but this is for the test purpose i'm making it get just to make it easy and also because i can test it in browser directly so things always go wrong when I try to do something uh, live. Let's see if it's uh, it's going to work. It says successfully deployed. Uh, and I don't really be believe it, but uh, let's say rest and pressure. So what it does is it actually makes a new, I'm looking at, oh, sorry. Let's make a new one. Oops, uh, what did I say? Rest and then rest pressure so i'm just before i'm going to do anything i want to debug this see if anything comes out of my um of, of of this endpoint i made here so the debug should actually it can happen in this browser so i'm just going to deploy this one and then let's say rest i forgot already the name rest pressure okay seems like it was created and it says it's empty. Okay. So, um, and then payload. Okay, let's see if this works. Now what I would like to do is I would like to go over to my Raspberry Pi because what I did right now is I, I, I checked if I could hit that uh, pressure service. And I actually also dumped whatever came in and it seemed like that worked. As somebody just asked me about the polling and all that, we need some something to actually push data to it. And let's let's go over to my terminal here. Made some some little uh, baking on on advance or whatever you need to say that. Um, so these these are really standard recipes on how to listen on ports which i can at the end or uh, i can give the tutorials or links where you can find the pinpoints um so really don't need to but it's maybe 50 lines of code not more than that for getting my raspberry to uh, to give me something here i need to change with that candy crush url candy my blue mix and then it was called rest some pressure some value and then i just put in a comment saying it's a raspberry so i know where it comes from so this should be that one let's see if we can kind of run it uh, this is always a big big moment Oh, yeah, it says that it can't find my, that's not good. I forgot something in my uh, slash. Okay, thanks. Let's see. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Thanks a lot. Slash pressure and then actually uh, uh, question. Thanks, man. You guys are already awesome. Yeah, that was, I should maybe not have ch chosen the same URL. But this is what we are filtering on here, right? Pressure. So, and it is already there. Yeah. Okay. Let's try one more time. Wow. It says pressure. It's coming through. And it's probably because I'm. So. Let's try to kind of push really, really hard because it should have been full by when it started, right? So hopefully when I'm pressing, it's like 999 or 993. So you should imagine me where you take kind of candies out of my head or something like that. This is actually where I needed you guys. Um, and then gradually the weight is going down. If I had my weight, I could kind of had, had done it. And you know, by one week it's down to 900. 800, 
867. I'm eating candy very slow, apparently. I need to be faster. Let's see. Oh, okay. It came down to 570. Let's see if that triggers anything. Oh, 570. So the way here, if you look back at this, the way that it tweets, it says that it takes the payload directly. So whatever comes out of here, it's, uh, which is the, the stripped value, that's what it's going to tweet. What you can do after this one is to add a, a template. Yeah, you can add a template, I guess. And I think I'm um, 10 minutes, okay, good. <laughs> Let's see, hopefully this is not going to destroy my application. I'm going to deploy it. S this should happen real time, so this is still going through and by behind, right? Every two, sec two seconds it's measuring. Let's see if it's going to have any impact when I'm kind of having the weight to become lower than than 600, I guess. Okay. One new tweet. Wanna look? Oh, that's not good. 26. Oh, that's one minute ago, so it must be an older one. You need to buy new candy because the weight is only 452. So this is the way, uh, you know, this whole thing, did it make sense? Was it, too, was it too difficult to understand the whole flow of how this works? I, I hope you guys saw that I could I could kind of in a really easy way turn this into uh, my idea of having this candy machine automatically pushing things to Twitter can happen in like 10 minutes. I will I would like to want to go back to the template and say oh um, what's what's the kind of next steps because we already spoke about why it should be a get method and uh, why not a post and so on. Uh, if you if you dig down to the IoT experts, go to them, they will definitely not even speak that REST services. They will say, oh, we have millions, billions of devices, HTTP, you know, doing it over that kind of protocol is too heavy, there's too much overhead. So we just want to have very small, 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 concise messages. So MQTT is another thing we can use instead of actually uh, having a web service uh, on, on the site. So on here, you can, instead of an input, Sorry, not output. Input, you can kind of have MQQT, MQTT or the IBM IoT. So I didn't, I, I, I pretty soon think that I couldn't have reached this, but not, the next step here is obviously to say, oh, I want my, all my devices in a very secure way connected to the Bluemix instance. And you can do that by this Python library, downloading that from Bluemix, it's open source as well. And the way I, over here in my, um, so instead of doing a regular, client, like an, an um, a HTTP request here, I'll then use another library, the MQTT library, and, in, and push my messages over the MQ, MQTT protocol instead. And that one will always have security, quality of service, a very limited amount of overhead and, and additional data going back and forth. So that will not destroy your kind of performance uh, and so on. So that that's that's the next step, definitely. If if you know if you want to work with this on a more enterprise level, uh, web services was just for me to very fast go from mobile to to IoT. But you should you should leverage MQTT protocol. Another thing you probably discovered was my switch statements as well. If you saw there, I just had zero to a thousand. There was not really any logic around it. I I just knew what the minimum and ma maximum value is, and also what if it's a different kind of candy I'm going to have. So that's kind of what we will call business logic or additional application logic. And instead of actually overloading our node red UI with this kind of statements, there's another service in, in IBM Bluemix called uh, IBM Business Rules. So in there, you can actually 
go in and define your candy. So it's jelly candy, it's kilograms. What kind of, and, and what it's going to do is when you lift those kind of rules, it will give you REST interfaces. So you can kind of say, oh, this, this, this month is going to be jelly beans and it will have that predefined setup and you will, you will not be able to be worrying about uh, changing your application and deploying it again. Uh, another thing we really want to do is, I said initially that this Bluemix is power to the, to the people. But as a developer in a big company, we have managers and business as well. They need to have something as well. So one great advantage is that you can say we want to deco decouple the business logic. We want to focus about the application and some of our, our knowledge and, and, and experience. But by the way, some specific business rules and logic, you have a framework and tool. You can go in and model these things, and we're just going to call them. So in that way, the developers and technicians can actually work very close with the business because the business will get a tool where they can put in the requirements. Normally before, they, they are like in, 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 in big, big software requirements documents and specifications and so on. No way. In Bluemix, we are actually also satisfying the business. And they can go in and write their business logic in regular natural code. And, and even the, this, these things can actually go and look if any of the rules are contradicting each other and so forth. So, so I'm just going to say this is just the beginning and starting point. But one big way you can take this further is to obviously go with the IoT pure way of MQTT. And, and also you can kind of go in and say, hey, business, I have this fancy tool where you can put in your application, uh, sorry, business logic, and I will automatically have it in my application and whenever you have a change just deploy the rules no change to the application or code itself okay i think i have four minutes left any questions or you know was it too high level or too difficult the thing is so th these people who made the node red they you can make this into uh, some components abstract components and they've already made a marketplace as well so some of the flows you made, you can even publish it to other people as well. So if there are any other, so yeah, you can do that definitely and reuse it in other flows. And this node red is, a, is abstract again. You can actually run this on the, on the Raspberry Pi if you want. This, this, this is just because I think the Raspberry Pi is a little single thing going into Bluemix and I want to do a lot of other things, but, but definitely you can, you can make the flows into components and reuse them in other flows. For the flows, if you want to do automated, yeah. So I'm not an expert on this, so we need to uh, we need to get them back on this. But this is actually written in pure JSON, so this is just an abstraction layer as well. So whatever I'm doing here is going to be in JSON format as well. Some scripts, yeah, comma to run and make and, and say, oh, I have this flow. You can um, inject some of this in here and then say, oh, I expect this value. So instead of actually thinking it's a component, you can have some simulated device or something like that. This is just one swim lane, right? You can, this is just going into the, the, the Candy Crush. You can make Candy Crush test, Candy Crush dev environment as well and take the flows from here and port it whenever you, your test here succeeds. So this is just one, one, one Candy Crush, but it, 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 you, can, you can think it of as Candy Crush dev, and then the next one will be Candy Crush production or something like that.